Europa. Good day to all of you engineers and as promised, this is now coaching asset one that we're going to discuss and syempre malapit ng board exam kaya coaching na yun nakikita nyo and sana makatulong ito sa pagsagot uh, niyo sa ESAT. Okay? And uh, kinakabahan na ba kayo? Kung hindi pa, well may dalawang bagay kung bakit hindi ka kinakabahan. Una, maare dahil super ready ka na. Kaya walang-wala na ang board exam. Kayang-kaya mo na yan. Okay? That's a good thing. Ha, bakit? Kasi talaga kahit ano man ang mangyari, papasa ka sa board exam. Kaya hindi ka na kinakabahan. Another thing is, kaya hindi ka kinakabahan malamang dahil okay lang kahit na ano yung maging result ng board exam mo. No? Ibig sabihin, pumasaman o bumagsak, okay lang sa'yo. Well, hindi masyadong maganda yon, Okay? Kasi kung uh, talagang gusto mong pumasa, may konti, kahit konti lang nakaba na mararamdaman. Uh, and don't worry kung hindi mo pa yan nararamdaman. Pagdating ng board exam, nako, ang laking kaba na mararamdaman mo. Okay? Kaya... Uh, Kung hindi ka pa kinakabahan ngayon, okay lang yan. Ibig sabihin, prepared ka na. Okay? And uh, kung sakali man nasa board exam yan dumating, ibig sabihin, concerned ka talaga na gusto mong pumasa sa board. So, ang payo ko sa iyo, payo ko sa inyong lahat, magbasa lang kayo ng magbasa, magsagot lang kayo ng magsagot, hanggang sa dumating yung araw ng mismong board exams. Okay? And I hope lahat ng mga pinabasa natin, lahat ng inaaral natin, lumabas sa board exam, makatulong sa pagpasa ninyo. Okay? So if you are ready, I'm ready. Ako nga pala si Engineer Melvin Arceo. That's the one you're seeing in the background. Yeah. Okay? Kung ready na kayo, let's get it on. Question number one. In PCM quantization process, any round of errors in the transmitted signal are produced when the code is converted back to analog in the receiver. And it will produce an error called, ano daw tawag dito sa error na ito? Is it aperture error, quantization overload, or the slope error? Ang tinutukoy niya rito is whenever we have a quantization uh, process sa PCM. Kasi nag-undergo ito, daw ito ng PCM quantization process. So say you have a voltage uh, with respect to time. And then you have an analog signal. This is the one that will be quantized. Okay. So halimbawa, kinontize natin yan. These are the quantizing levels. Uh, ngayon, halimbawa, merong isang point on the sampling process that is not exactly uh, on the level of the quantization. So, what will happen? Pagka ito ay nireproduce doon sa receiver, this will not, this point will not be exactly the same point as the transmitted signal. Magkakaroon siya ng error. At ito nga yung tinatanong. At ang tanong ay kung ano raw klaseng error yon. That error is called the quantization error, that's letter B. Okay? And ang ibang uh, tawag sa quantization error is, uh, that is quantization noise. Okay? So another name for quantization error is quantization noise. Question number one, letter B. Next number. Question number two. With an open transmission line, what is the voltage standing wave at the end of the line? Okay, so paano ba ang gagawin natin dito? Yung transmission line kasi, say for example, here is our transmission line. Madali lang naman yung tanong rito. Eh, no? In an open transmission line, meaning yung ends niya ay open. Ano raw yung voltage standing wave at the end? So take note, we're, we're looking for the voltage standing wave at the end end of the line okay 
ang approach dito is para ka lang maglalagay ng uh, say for example a voltmeter. Uh, na pag naglagay ako ng voltmeter at the end of the line, ano yung voltage na masusukat ko? Assuming that I have here a uh, source, a voltage source at the input. Ano yung masusukat ko na voltage at the output? Will it be maximum, minimum, either maximum or minimum, or cannot say because of lack of information? Sana lagi na lang ganito yung, <laughs> yung choices na because of lack of information, so you cannot say. But um, there is enough information for this question. So what will be the voltage standing wave at the end? Pag nag naglagay ka ng voltmeter, ang masusukat mo yung mismong input voltage, and that will be a maximum value. Okay, so the answer for this is letter A. Actually, meron tayong guideline for a standing wave in an open line. Ano ba yung guideline natin dyan? Ganito yan. So say for example, we have, a, uh, we have an open line, an open transmission line that is, ano daw yung standing wave niya? Okay, so meron tayong apat na guideline para dyan. Una, the voltage incident wave, meaning from the source to the load, is reflected back, that's the reflected signal or wave, just as if it were to continue, no phase reversal. Meaning, yung, yung, yung incident wave, yung voltage incident wave, pag bumalik in phase, no phase reversal. In that case, pag nangyari yun, the sum of the incident and reflected voltage waveforms is maximum at the open. Yan yung tinatanong sa atin kanina. Pero pagdating sa current, syempre ubang, ibang usapan na yun. No? The current incident wave is reflected back 180 degrees from how it would have continued. So meaning to say, yung input mo is, I mean yung reflected wave mo is out of phase with the incident wave. Therefore, if they are out of phase, the sum of the incident and reflected current waveforms is minimum at the open. Dahil magkakaroon sila ng uh, magiging ano sila, eh, out of phase. Eh. So therefore, uh, yung vector sum niya, mababawasan yung incident wave with the amount of the reflected wave. So these are the guidelines for the standing wave in an open line. Pero meron din tayo siyempre guidelines for standing wave in a shorted line. Mamaya meron naman tayong tanong tungkol doon. Okay? So that's number 2. Number 2, leading ko lang, maximum ang voltage standing wave at the end of the line. Okay? Next number. Question number 3. The E layer of the ionosphere aids, letter A, M, F, B, H, F, both MF and HF and letter D, VHF. Ano raw yung ini-aid ng E-layer? Ano ba yung tinutukoy niya na ini-aid? Ganito yan. Kapag ka, alam naman natin ang ionosphere has layers, tama? We have the D-layer, this is the lowest layer. Okay, the E-layer and the F-layer. Pag-usapan muna natin yung D-layer. Ang D-layer basically will reflect the VLF at saka yung LF. Very low frequency and uh, low frequency. This will be reflected back to Earth. While yung MF at saka HF will be absorbed. Absorbed by the D layer. Okay? And then it will go to the next layer which is the E layer. Uh, ngayon, ano ang ginagawa ni E layer? For the MF. For the MF, ito naman yung kanyang nire-reflect. Yan. And some of the HF wave. So some of the HF wave and the MF will be reflected uh, reflected by the E layer. So therefore, uh, yung E layer will aid what? Will aid letter, letter A is the correct answer. It will aid MF and will reflect some of the HF but not all of the HF. Pero all of the MF will be reflected by the E layer. Kaya nga ang sagot dyan is letter A, not letter, 
letter B. Because most of the HF uh, signal will be absorbed by the E layer and then will be reflected by the either the uh, F1 or F2. But if there is a sporadic E, natin, which is uh, a very high, highly ionized layer of the E layer, it will be reflected by the sporadic E. Pero kung E layer lang, it will be the MF that will be reflected by the, uh, the E layer. So that's why the E layer of the ionosphere aids the MF. So the answer is letter A. Okay? Okay, so next number. For number 3, letter A, next number. Number 4, it is the orientation of the electric field radiated from it. Alam naman natin kung ano yung orientation orientation of the electric field. I mean, kapag ka ang electric field natin, say, say for example, is uh, the electric field is, say, vertically or oriented vertically. Okay? Or the electric field is uh, oriented horizontally. Tawag natin dito is vertically polarized and dito naman ay horizontally polarized. The electromagnetic wave is either vertically polarized and horizontally polarized. And that depends on the electric field. So, ang tinutukoy niyang definition here is, of course, polarization. So, the answer is letter A for number 4, letter A. Okay, next number. Question number 5. What is the best way to eliminate or reduce the effect of ground reflected waves? We all know that quarter wavelength antennas, the Marconi antennas especially, are not affected by the ground. In fact, the ground is one way to enhance the propagation of uh, the signal for Marconi. But for half-wave dipoles, there is an effect. The ground may affect the radiation pattern of a half-wave dipole. So the question is, how are we going to eliminate or reduce the effect of those ground-reflected waves? Not letter A, do we mount the antenna quarter wavelength from the ground? Or mount the antenna half wavelength from the ground? Or mount the antenna as close as possible to the ground? Ito yung pinaka-worst na sagot. Hindi po yan yung tamang sagot. No? Kasi may effect nga yung ground doon sa antenna natin. And then you place the antenna as close as possible to the ground. No. To eliminate the, the ground uh, reflected waves or the effect of those waves, we mount the antenna far enough above the Earth's surface to obtain a free space propagation. So the answer is letter D for number 5.